Hey friends, hope you're well. Today, let's take a look at the latest Samsung Frame TV, which is Samsung's well-known QLED TV panel. And on first impression, this is a QLED that not only looks amazing, even in direct sunlight, it's also transformed my lounge room visually. It has an updated matte finish, slim fit wall mount, and framing panels that turn this 65 inch TV into a work of art. But what exactly makes this TV one of the best lifestyle TVs for just about any home? Well, well, I've spent the last few months with this TV, so hopefully my review today will give you some idea on just how incredible this TV is, and I'm genuinely excited about this review. Samsung has no influence over this video. I bought this TV with my own money, just as an FYI. So let's talk about the setup first, because this TV is made to be mounted and looks absolutely stunning on the wall. Everything needed to mount this TV is included in the box, and for a clean, cableless setup like this i had holes drilled into the wall with the single cable running out through this outlet here into samsung's single cable box which gives me access to all the ports that i need four hdmi outputs one with eARC, optical audio out ethernet port and even three usb ports these magnetic snap-on bezels come separately but are a must buy i find the white blends in perfectly with the white walls while i was setting this all up i was actually inspired by how beautiful the samsung frame tv looked and i went ahead and bought a new tv cabinet to lift the entire space i love how the natural oak of this simple tv unit matches really nicely with the all white aesthetic of the frame and walls i think it looks so much better than the very dark and plain setup that I had previously. So this TV features a VA 4K panel with quantum dot or QLED tech and even supports 120 Hertz VRR and G-Sync for the 55 inch panels and above. I was worried about the really bright living room conditions since this place gets a lot of sunlight, but this TV thrives in well-lit rooms. So it has deep uniform blacks and QLED produces a wider range of colors, but unfortunately it doesn't have local dimming or mini LED backlighting like Samsung's other high-end TVs. I'll go into more detail about the TV panel and performance later in this video. There is something I didn't like when I first turned on this TV, and actually, I'm being nice. I really do not like it because it's so poorly designed, and that's Samsung's aging T-Zend operating system. The menu design is clunky and unintuitive, and it has this tendency to want to show you all the Samsung TV Plus content all the time, even when I simply just want to change the settings. It's been really quite frustrating to navigate. Thankfully, hooking up my Apple TV 4K easily solved the issue, so I don't need to deal with this Samsung operating system. Apple TV looks amazing on this panel with the bezel frame thanks to the snappy A15 Bionic chip, 4K and HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision support, and the Apple interface is so much easier to use. The other dislike is that this TV isn't exactly cheap at over $2,000 for the 65 inch variant here. And that price range is quite close to the Samsung QN90B or even the LG C2 OLED screen. But there's plenty of sales floating around for the frame TV. I managed to find this one on sale for $1,500, which is a much more attractive price point. Here is the biggest selling point. The TV transforms into framed art and that's what makes the Samsung frame TV so special. Before using this TV, I was unsure why anyone would buy this TV to hang as art. It seemed like a gimmick and a feature you'd use a few times and just forget about. Well, I was wrong. As soon as I turned on this TV and activated art mode by clicking the power button once, I was blown away. Not only does the matte QLED display look like a canvas, the image quality looks so much better than I was expecting. In person, it looks exactly like a real life artwork. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. Of course, when you went up closer to the TV, on an oil painting, for example, you can't see the strokes, it's still flat, but from afar, it looks like a piece of artwork and nothing like a TV. And that's the charm and beauty of the Samsung Frame TV. It blends into your living spaces and it's transformed my lounge room from a typical TV on top of a cabinet to something that's just so much more elevated and cleaner looking. It's so much better than a blank TV screen when it's switched off. You can even load your own pictures onto the TV and there's a lot of customization options like changing the virtual frame type, colors, and brightness. Though I like it without any frame. 
It's a shame that the TV comes preloaded with only a few small handful of art and you'll need to subscribe to Samsung's art store service at $5.99 a month to access all 1,400 pieces of art. Although there are plenty of free and legal to use high resolution images of paintings online, you can manually add to the TV through the Samsung SmartThings app. There is another downside and negative that I have to share with you, and that's the viewing angle. Now, this TV's viewing angles are poor, and even before passing the corners of the TV, you'll see the colors fade immediately. That means if you plan to have this TV with a big couch in a big room, the viewers that aren't watching it straight on are going to experience distorted faded colors. For me, it's not a problem because my living space is pretty compact, so everyone gets a good view and we're luckily not fighting for the middle seat. Now surprisingly, this TV isn't just a pretty art frame. 4K and HDR content looks amazing on this QLED panel. And the high native contrast ratio of 6000 to 1 gives the TV ongoing deep blacks plus overall great brightness. It's so bright I had to lower the brightness down for this video. So the high brightness contrast ratio and anti-glare display looks amazing for just about any content, but especially for sports content. Two sports that I love watching is F1 and mixed martial arts. And Samsung's upscaling and picture processing capabilities create a brilliant picture quality from live HD sports broadcasts. And by using the intelligent adaptive picture mode here, it makes sure that the picture quality looks close to perfect in any setting night and day. So it's a great feature to set and forget. So the TV does the work of adjusting the brightness. I just can't get over the amazing matte finish too on this display because my previous LG BA OLED looked like a mirror during the day and the frame TV is by far the best TV in brighter rooms. It's even a huge step up from the older frame TV models without that matte finish. Color accuracy is really good in this TV after an easy quick calibration via Apple TV and an iPhone. It makes it super easy to calibrate by just placing my phone in front of the TV here. Android users also get access to a similar feature directly on the Samsung Frame TV. If you're looking to take color accuracy to the next level, the Frames Filmmaker mode turns off all image processing and then locks in the technically correct settings for watching movies and switches color temperature to 6,500 degrees Kelvin, which gives you as close to movie calibrated watching without getting it professionally calibrated, which can be a lot of money. Okay, so this TV has a secret weapon up its sleeve and it's surprisingly a good 4K gaming display, ticking almost every box needed for gaming on the PS5, Xbox X and Switch. Using HDMI port number four gives you 4K at 120 Hertz with variable refresh rate, which I did not expect for a lifestyle TV. The input lag time of nine to 10 milliseconds is actually very similar to the more expensive Samsung S95B. And then we have the Samsung integrated game bar too. This is an overlay you get when you press and hold the play button here. This gives you info like FPS, input lag and tweaks, key game settings. All I had to do was tweak the settings once, playing around with the advanced settings. I've left it ever since. It was well worth the 20 minutes tinkering around with the settings because the picture quality looks amazing now for gaming. Just make sure your console is plugged into the HDMI port with the controller icon. Otherwise, you won't get access to the gaming settings, which originally had me confused because I didn't plug it into the right port. So I've been sinking a lot of hours into the new Zelda game, Tears of the Kingdom. Shout out in the comments if you've been playing this too. Two, it's definitely a game of the year contender. It's obviously not a game though that takes advantage of 4K 120 Hertz, but its art direction and rich colors on the matte display is absolutely stunning. The entire world of Hyrule looks like a portal into interactive artwork. Just take a look at this, it's so beautiful. Now, the local dimming and HDR does not have the complete eye-popping highlights of other OLED TVs like the LG C2, A90K, or S95B. It still holds its own as a gaming TV though. 
Also, a really cool feature for new Samsung TVs, including the frame, is that they have first access to the Xbox Game Pass app, which lets you play Xbox games without the console, which is awesome for people like me who don't have an Xbox. I gave it a quick go with my third party controller here, and it works really well. It's essentially cloud gaming, so it's capped at 1080p 60 frames, but the frame does a pretty good job at upscaling to improve visual quality. I'll probably share a full video on Xbox app cloud gaming separately because it's pretty interesting. So the Samsung Frames remote is worthy of a mention as well. It looks really sleek and minimal to match the TV and it's able to set up as a universal remote through the settings to control the Apple TV 2 or other entertainment units. What makes it extra special though is the solar tech. There's no batteries to replace here, it just gets charged by the solar panel on the rear and if you need to manually charge it, there's a USB-C port at the bottom. It's a win for convenience and sustainability but it's a little annoying that the remote doesn't have a direct input source change button to be honest it just adds to that clunkiness of the menu for sound there is an inbuilt 40 watt speaker that sounds decent for all types of content but the bass is lacking which is to be expected but the cool thing is that it supports dolby atmos and samsung q symphony which uses the tv speakers in unison with supported samsung soundbars to provide a multi-channel sound experience without getting extra speakers I don't have a Samsung soundbar, but I do have Sonos's amazing Arc soundbar in white, which I think looks really nice in this setup. It still remains one of the best soundbars you can buy today. It makes a great match aesthetically and audibly to the Frame TV. Take a listen to the difference between the Sonos soundbar and the Frame TV's audio. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. If you're after the best lifestyle TV you can buy right now that 100% looks amazing in any room when mounted, the Samsung Frame TV is the one to go for hands down. There's nothing else like it at the moment. But you will have to pay for it and you will have to deal with the insanely clunky menus and user interface. And for those who are aiming for the best of the best screen performance, like a home theater setup or gaming only TV, there are better alternatives like the LG's G3, Sony's A95K or even Samsung's S95C. But again, you will be paying top dollar for it. So overall, yes, this was quite an overwhelmingly positive review and it wasn't influenced by Samsung at all. In fact, they even reached out with the opportunity to sponsor this video, which I didn't go with just so I could share my honest opinions with you that I wanted to share with you. So if you did find this review useful, please drop a like to let me know. And if you made it to the very end of this video, comment the code word framed and I'll give your comment a like. I'll leave a video right here to my home theater projector setup which is incredible for huge screen movies and gaming as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video